You're talking about gas in your Jeep right now, and you want to pay over five bucks a gallon for diesel? Huh? At one point, it was lower than gas. You're truck shopping like Trump's going to become president again. I am. What if he doesn't? <laughs> I would freaking be relentless, dude. I'd be so upset at you. I might fire you. Really? I mean, dude, I'd be very emotional if it wasn't my fault. But seeing that it's my fault, I don't really care, dude. Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, June 19th, 2023. Patio looks good after a lot of rain this weekend. No issues. It's always a good thing. We left the curve dry lay just so the customers could make sure that's how they wanted it before we actually cut the pavers but i think we're going to be all set so we got to mark that line on the inside of the pavers and score the line cut it and after that benny's going to start installing the border pavers and while he install the stalls the border pavers i'm going to start building our sitting wall double-sided sitting wall those are the blocks we're going to be using they're the same color as the the brown bricks made by Teco block style of the blocks called Sema split faced is the the front of the block they split these blocks in half that's what gives them the texture colors called chestnut brown 40 pieces on a pallet pallet weighs 2363 pounds I got some corner pieces in my truck we're gonna grab those but we're basically gonna be starting the corner going just before the end there and then the same thing over here, go over and stop the wall somewhere over here. That way they'll be able to host a bunch of people. They'll be able to sit on the wall and then it also retains the grade because we had to dig it down so much to level it off. Morning, Benny. Morning. How you living, bud? Living good. Living good? Yeah. That's good. Overcast today, man. I like that. Good weather. Good weather for work. Yep. Hey, man. Hey. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. Mm. <laughs> good to see YouTube. Good to see said? YouTube. Good no, to I see. Said... Dude, that's the new thing right there. It's good to see YouTube. Nice to see YouTube today. <laughs> you want to tell them the mistake I made this morning? Forgot the key. Yep. How do I forget the key, dude, to my machine? How irresponsible, dude. Not even a weekend to owning this machine, I forgot the key at my house. I can't be doing that stuff. Mm. I'm the owner. <laughs> I'm supposed to have higher standards for myself. Honestly, bro, if you were the one that forgot the keys, I would freaking be relentless, dude. I'd be so upset at you. I might fire you. Really? I mean, dude, I'd be very emotional if it wasn't my fault, but seeing that it's my fault, I don't really care, dude. Yep. <laughs> anyway, bro, we're here. You ready to cut this thing? Yep. Cool. Let's get into the day, bud. So I've explained it in some older videos of mine, but for any of the new viewers, I always lay my border out on top of them, especially for any curve. I know there's faster ways to do it. You can lay PVC conduit. You can do whatever kind of flexible thing you want to make it quicker than laying the border out. But you're never going to get a complete picture of what it's going to look like unless you put the border down. When you put the conduit down or whatever flexible thing you're going to use, you can kind of get an idea for the curve. Like, oh, it looks nice, but you can't actually see what the pavers are going to look like. And doing it this way allows that. So you should definitely do that. That's what I recommend. The hard part about this kind of curve is that when we mark this, we have to mark on the inside of the pavers, so the, the line's going to be pretty wobbly. But after a lot of experience of using the saw like this, you kind of just know to stay on that line and you keep the saw uh, steady. But I'll show you what I mean here. So you can see all those lines are a little wobbly and shaky, but once your saw is in a groove and you're scoring the line, you just kind of be as steady as possible and you keep the, the center of those wobbles. But the more you practice, the better you get at it. If you're a homeowner, you're trying to do like a really cool curved patio, 
and you don't have a saw like the one I have, you can go down to Home Depot or any of your power equipment rental stores and rent a concrete demo saw, is what they call it, or a concrete cutoff saw, depending on where you live. It's called a few different things, but usually you can rent it for less than 100 bucks a day, so if you kind of save up and wait for all your cuts at the end, you can go rent a saw for a day, use it, do all your cuts, bring it back, and then keep doing your thing. But that's really the best way to cut an entire edge of a patio like this, because if you're trying to do it one by one or with a small saw, geez, you're gonna be there for a long time trying to do that. Time to score it up, bud. Just scoring. Cut this one out. Cut that first one. Proud of my cut. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Came out all right. Looks like an ear. An ear. <laughs> ear. Yeah, it looks good. It's always about like, hey, what's the shape of this patio? I don't know what this one is. Yeah. 
What's the shape of this patio? A lot of these cuts on the sides that are smaller, we usually lift them up, put a little bit more chipstone under them, like these ones right here. Make sure they don't sink. Lift them up, put a little bit more, and then hammer them into place. Because when you cut in place, sometimes it kicks the chipstone out from the edge, which isn't a big deal with a bigger size cut, but something like this, you want to be able to put a little bit of chipstone on. You see all these spaces right here? That's where the saw was. So you just want to put a little bit more chip. Lift it up. Because you don't want this little piece um, sinking down in the future, so. Now you can hammer into place. But this is going to be Ben's project now that it's cut. He's going to start doing the border. Probably start in this corner and wrap his way over here. I'm shifting focus to the sitting wall. Yay, yay. <laughs> I'm gonna slow mo that dude. See a cheese go. <laughs> so, this was our squared off guideline from this house. We used to lay the pavers, we don't need it anymore. Uh, I've got a few jobs on my channel where I've built a sitting wall like this. You lay the pavers down first and then you build the wall behind it. Um, just because the best the best thing to do with that, well, that string really just messed my whole words up, dude. I almost got tangled up. <laughs> yeah, he's like, that, was, that wasn't even words I just heard. I just heard noise. So the main reason we do that is because it's easier to just lay the patio out, patio out exactly where you want it. <laughs> I gotta put this string down, bro. Can you real string and talk at the same time? No. Patio, pa patios. <laughs> so the reason we do... <laughs> I just wanna go play disc golf. So we do that as much as possible and we do just a sitting wall because it's not retaining any grade or any pressure. Um, so it doesn't need to have a full block buried. These pavers are two and three eighths inches. So when we lay this six inch block on the same bedding stone as our pavers are set, it's gonna be almost halfway buried. And that's gonna be plenty enough to lock that first row into place because we're only going three blocks high with a cap. That's all you need for a sitting wall. Three, three blocks at six inches is 18, and then plus a three inch cap is 21. And then we have to minus those, that two and a half inches or so underneath the paver. And that brings us down to like the 18 inch mark. And that's perfect sitting wall height. You agree, Benny? Perfect sitting wall height, right? Yeah. Even if this was like a three foot high uh, retaining wall we'd probably still build it like this the only difference being is behind the the pavers here we dig down a little bit just to get another inch or so get a little bit more than a half of the block buried it just makes more sense than building the, the wall and then doing the pavers after especially on a 90 degree angle because you could build the wall it could be off square by like a half inch to an inch and then your entire all your pavers you're going to be able to see it and now all we got to do is tuck the block right up against it we got some block split for corners. And those blocks that are split into corners are from the full uh, solid pieces they give you. They give you two solid pieces per row with this system. And it's for that reason you can split these perfectly in half and you got corners for outside or inside corners. And if you have a block splitter, that just makes it so you don't have to buy any corners. You get the pallet, you have your block splitter on site and you can make your corners. If you need something not perfectly square or you know a little bit more of like a radius or an open turn, you can do that as well. So it gives you, the, gives you a lot of freedom on your corner making. This wall block can be built as a single-sided wall. If 
this was the face, you would just core fill these gaps here. But in our situation, we're gonna have a mostly double-sided wall. I think the first row we're gonna be able to just make single-sided, but then the second row we have to make double-sided. Which when you do that, you just have to spin the block around so they sit tight and you have two sides, no gaps. Very good wall block system. There's a lot of things you can build with them. Probably just gonna build the whole first row double-sided anyway, dude, just so the joint lines stay nice, you know? I'm gonna do that. Okay. Benny, yeah. Liz is here to save the day. Nice. She brought the keys. Abby, I can't believe I forgot my machine keys. Okay. How silly is that? I know. Is that an onion peel? Oh no, it's a leaf. <laughs> it's a flower it petal. Don't tell me it didn't look like an onion peel though. You're an onion peel. Bad that we got brown pavers. I like never use brown pavers. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna go good with this thing. Oh, it looks awesome. Oh, I like the color of them. It's like cinnamony. Cinnamony. I think that was the color swatch. I think that's the name of it. Cinnamon? Whoa, Cinnamony. That is brown. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? With the border, how about that? Like no, that style, cool. huh? That's really nice. Yeah, you never use this color. Yeah, it's because I don't really work at brown houses very often. You never really offer it because you wouldn't put that at like a, I don't know, gray house or white house or blue house. A yellow house. Would you put that a yellow house? A yellow house. A yellow house. Very nice, Patty. Looks good. Yeah, I'm happy about it. They yeah. Put a fire pit in or anything? No. no, they'll probably just be able to put a portable one on there if they're gonna have a fire. Drop it right like a few feet off of the sitting walls. Then you can put chairs around the back side. Everyone can sit on the sitting walls. Styling. Thank you. All right. Okay. Love ya. I like to always use a solid block for the corners on the beginning and the end. Sixteen inch block, so we want center to be at eight. Take go a little more. That's it right there. So I'm gonna start by setting those corner blocks in and then I can work out both ways. Looks good. Nice. So we're following the pitch of the patio here. And it's going that way. It's going, it's on the border right there, but going that way and that way. So we're copying that. 
with these wall blocks. We're gonna be going at the same pitch. There's nothing wrong with that. You can slope a wall at an eighth of a slope all you want. You can go at a quarter. You can follow the grade of the land if you want to. It all depends the situation, but our patio is not perfectly level, so our wall is not gonna be perfectly level. We're gonna match the slope, so by eye, everything looks level. I think this needs to come up a little. See the back's wobbly. This needs to go down a little. That's good. And front to back is good. Another block set. Wash, rinse, repeat. Trav's back again. <laughs> Summer vacation. Yeah. Excited? Yeah. That's cool. Your brother's gotten a head start on you the past couple weeks. Good morning. Good morning. About to make some concrete. About to make some concrete. Nice. There's a little head right there that you can put on that hose. I like that you're thinking with your dipstick. I was going to let you use that hose, but you thought for yourself and got, it, got your own. I like, I don't need your hose. Can you do me one favor, though? Just make sure you're a little bit further away from that nice new machine so there's no splatter. Thank you. I don't want concrete on it. Me neither. I'd, I'd be so sad, Trav. What do you think about it? The first time you've seen it, right? Yeah. Yeah? Is it orange? It's maroon. <laughs> what are you I literally had someone comment about it on the machine video. What did he say exactly? He said something like, it was like, hopefully Trav thinks that's orange. Like, I wonder what color Trav's gonna think it is. <laughs> it's gonna be on there forever, Trav. I'm sorry, bud. Had to happen. That's internet gold right there. You know? You got anything to say about it? Still a yellow bucket, right? It's a yellow bucket. <laughs> I actually had to get rid of it. I went to the dump. It was yellow. We had to get it out of the <laughs> Every time I saw it, I was like, damn it, Trav might be right. <laughs> Why don't you work with your brother on the cement? Just do the water for him. So today is June 20th, Tuesday, and we're going to hopefully wrap this project up. Uh, they're saying some rain this afternoon. We're going to watch the weather. Hopefully it pushes back. 
saying it's just gonna be some showers anyway, but hopefully those pavers dry in time because we want to do the polymeric sand today as well. We're gonna continue the wall block to the end of the patio, and there's pretty much gonna be a step right there to correct the grade. And then the sitting wall is gonna stop like four or five feet off the edge. That way you can kind of get in and exit off the patio through a step over there. So I gotta continue laying that first row of block. We got about half of the second row already done and glued from yesterday. We just gotta add on to that. Hey pal, got something for you. So you wouldn't want one of these hammers if I bought one. All right, I'll buy another one, dude. Another hundred thirty dollars in debt for you. Stuff I do for you, Ben. <laughs> Where's the love, huh? Where's the love? <laughs> yeah, my life savings of clout coins. Still debating. I think I'm gonna. This is gonna be below grade, so I was thinking about just leaving it open. But if I do cut it nice and flat, it's gonna bring that joint line more to the middle. But if you look at these ones, it's kind of off to the side. When you do a double-sided, it just kind of lands a little off on the smaller side. But then it hits the middle of the big block again. And that's kind of what you want to be more worried about. We don't need to put any kind of grass or anything on the outside of this, so we're not gonna worry about, you know, making it, so we're trying to grow grass. But with the m number one thing we don't want is for it to go any higher than like these bumps, okay? I'm gonna be putting wall block this whole way, so. You fill in those little holes right there, Trav. Just like that. So you can follow Richie as he kind of wheels down and gives you the concrete. Try to give him some room as you go. And uh, I'm gonna keep going around the border so we can try to get this whole outside done. Sound good? You're talking about gas in your Jeep right now and you want to pay over five bucks a gallon for diesel? Huh? At one point it was lower than gas. You're truck shopping like Trump's going to become president again. What if he doesn't? <laughs> you know what you got to do is you got to buy a dually 97. <laughs> fix, fix it up so he can buy it when he's ready. Dually 97. Trav, it's funny because I can totally picture you in it, man. I really can. Blow it in the wind. Yep, blowing in the wind. Yeah. Tailpipe smoking black. American flag on the back. <laughs> it does 
How's it going, everyone? I hope you're doing well. It's been quite a while since I uploaded. Ben and I have been working hard and working some long weeks trying to finish strong at the end of the season here in Massachusetts. It's October 30th as I record this voiceover, I guess. And um, I got quite a, quite a bit of work still lined up. It's been a good year for leads and sales. And honestly, production too. We've gotten a lot of work done. But if any of you contractors are watching, you know you got to try to finish the year strong. As long as Mother Nature lets you, especially here in like the in the New England area. Right now, anywhere from November on, you know, is just kind of lucky to be able to work if you still can. You could get a random heavy snowstorm pretty much any time from here on out and really slow down any kind of production or possibly end production for the year. So we've been really focusing hard on the, the production, getting getting as many jobs done as we can. And I've just been putting the YouTube videos on the back burner and, and really focusing on the customers that I have and the work that I've signed up, trying to get as much as I, I can get done as I can. And then um, have as little amount to do in the spring as possible is the goal. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If so, hit that like and subscribe button. Let's get back into it. So confident, but I'm just gonna glue it. Might be a bad idea, but. You can always just pick the block up, uh, the uh, corner out. Hey. Wow. Hey, That's hey. Robbed your hammer, but it was the closest one to me. I don't need it. I'm just setting it in glue. There we go. Uh, take that thing, bud. Hey, that worked out, huh? Sitting wall is done, other than the cap. This is how I finish this corner over here. I'm not concerned about this because it's just not visible. It's under the deck here. And the grade's probably gonna come up to a couple inches below this block. But she's straight. She's straight, Benny. Same thing on this side, there's a little gap. But it's just not gonna be visible. It's 
So that'll be the main sitting area. A little bit of a smaller one here. And a step. Step down into the patio, dude. That's pretty cool, huh? What do you think, Trav? Good first day back? Yeah. You guys ready to backfill? Ready. You ready to backfill? See. See. You always get the best response, Richie. I know. You're going to be very popular. I know. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. It's a guarantee. Know. They don't like me. It's going to be a problem. <laughs> All right. Benny and Trav are going to be over here, backfilling. Me and Richie are going to be in the front, moving stone. Let's do it, boys. So this, you need to turn this thing on back here. It's just a kill switch. Okay. Oh. Go ahead. He's just gonna be manning the trigger and then when I need him to stop, he's gonna hit the down button. It's still going to be a little bit of a mess, but this is the easiest way, really, to, to not make a mess, I guess. Good. That's good, bud. I'll be right back. Somewhere you are, Trav.
now that all those caps are in place and set we're gonna lift them up one by one and put some glue underneath put them back down right in its spot it's always better to dry lay it out make sure everything's nice and straight everything's good before you glue it you don't want to glue it as you go and um, it just gives you a better idea after you lay it out and you know you're good it's easy go back glue it I think that steps gonna be pretty cool we still got to grade the stone around the back but it's gonna come right up level with that step get questions about the white stuff on the caps or the paper sometimes that's called efflorescence and what it is is it's the lime in the concrete pushing out through the surface and it's a natural part of the curing process with concrete so most of the time like you see with the sun baking on this most of the time after a few months or so this stuff will disappear you can see where the lines are on the pavers is actually where the, it was stacked on the pallet so that's just kind of where the airflow was going while it sat on the pallet for months and that's where it started curing uh, and efflorescence popped through but that will typically go away and if it doesn't they make efflorescence cleaner and sometimes it's just the way it is with concrete it happens with regular concrete too you just don't see it as much because regular concrete's already that color it's already white it's already white you know what i mean trav yep. so what is that stuff called efflorescence no efflorescence <laughs> the fluorescence. The flower. fluorescence. I like the brown guys. You know? I like the brown. Alright, time to glue these caps. And the boys are going to finish grading the stone. And then it's polymeric sand. Yeah, so efflorescence can be a big problem. And a lot of contractors, I feel, in my opinion, don't know how to quite deal with it correctly and you need to be able to educate your customers on that there's a lot of people i see in forums or facebook groups and hardscape talking about efflorescence and it's something that is just natural with the concrete curing process unfortunately with some concrete um, products that are black efflorescence is more noticeable that white stands out a lot more on a black concrete product than say a gray one but they still show up on gray as well and it's honestly the the sun needs to bake it and the concrete needs to cure the lime needs to come out and when you lay pavers or wall block down the, it typically goes away the majority of it sometimes you end up getting more if you're in a really um, wet situation or a wet application water actually pushes the lime through concrete as well causing efflorescence so sometimes you're going to see a wall that has a lot of efflorescence coming through most of the time that's going to be because there's a lot of water pushing through the wall block and it's carrying the lime through the concrete wall block at the same time causing the efflorescence to show it is done other than polymeric sand which is what we're going to be doing next oh ruining the video <laughs> What do you guys think about the shape? Me and Ben were trying to figure it out. It's weird. We were saying that like if this corner right here, if that corner was more rounded, it would look like an oven mitt. It would. <laughs> you know what it kind of reminds me of? What? A gladiator helmet. A gladiator? Oh my gosh. With the straight front. Yeah, the so back. this would be like the neck and then yeah. the... Okay. That might be the best one out of anything yet. Not if only it was rounded, it'd be Pac-Man. Yeah, that's true. That's actually true, yeah. We could make a Pac-Man out of that. Oh, 
But is it flat, right? That's the question. So now that it's nice and flat, the edges are concreted, the sitting wall is finished, and the stone is all spread around, it's time to polymeric sand the joints. We use a black polymeric sand on 95% of our paver projects. I really like the way it makes pavers pop. A lot of people think it's the right idea to buy a polymeric sand that matches your pavers. But if you ask me, I think that that's not a good thing because it makes your entire patio blend. The, the sand kind of makes the joint lines not disappear, but harder to see. And it just makes it look like a sheet of gray or brown or beige. Whatever color you have, it kind of turns the whole patio that color. So I've found using black polymeric sand, no matter what the color, just makes the paver joints pop out even more and really gives it a nice clean look. Let me know in the comments what you think. I think a lot of really nice paver projects can get ruined simply because they use polymeric sand that matches the paver color. But I'm curious to see what you guys think. So when I got the polymeric sand for this project, I actually bought uh, like a plastic or urethane um, hand tamper, which is a little bit easier on the pavers. If you've been watching my channel, you see that I hand tamp. When I go to do my polymeric sand, I use like a foam pad or a Brock panel or gator base panel, um, whatever you're more familiar with. But this is actually a tamper that you can just hit directly on the pavers and it saves you a lot of time and it doesn't scuff them. I haven't cracked one paver yet and I've used it on a lot of projects already. I'm obviously behind on the video so this is the first one you've seen me use it on. But I've used it on a lot of projects and I really like it. It's um, made by Bond Tools and it was a really good investment. It, it helps with the production speed on the polymeric sand install, install for sure but when we do polymeric sand we do it in a few stages we sweep it in and get the majority of them filled then we tamp it to get the sand to settle into the joints and then we go over the whole area again with more sand to fill it up um, to account for whatever settled and then we're going to use our leaf blower and blow off all the excess dust and um, granulars and once that's all set, we'll water it. I didn't actually get the watering part in the video or anything like that on this one, but I do have polymeric sanding videos on my channel if you're more interested in um, details. Go to my channel, check that out, or I'll leave a link in the description too if I remember. But this was a really cool project. Um, a big reason why we got this um, job really is because I came in and gave them an estimate and an idea to build the wall behind the patio so that they could get it down more to ground level where it meets their porch. They had a few other contractors come in and bid them on building a wall in front of it to build the patio up. And the customer did not like that idea simply because their little kids in the family could possibly fall off it or the elderly in the family could fall off it. So coming up with the idea of lowering the area and putting the retaining wall behind it, or sitting wall behind the patio, um, they were really happy with that idea, and it was a big reason why I got the job. So happy customers. I'm happy with it. The result was really good. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry for the delay. I'm hoping to get my schedule back together here for the uploads. But you guys know the deal. Until the next video, appreciate the support. God bless. Peace.